All right, it's ESPN College Football Pick'em for week number seven of the 2024 season. Let's not waste time. Let's get to it. All right, we got 10 games that ESPN puts out there. We're going to go through each one of them. But let me first tell you, visit bettingcfb.com. Make sure and check out the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And, of course, winningcureseverything.com is my site. Uh, you guys know all the different shows that I do here, but make sure you're subscribed to the podcast and the YouTube because there is stuff at both that you will not find on both. So there you go. All right, let's pull it up. ESPN's pick them for week number seven. And right now, I'm sitting at 28 and 22, which is not great. Uh, and at some point, I guess it didn't register the picks that I put in. I don't know. I guess you had to click save or something. I don't know. I thought they automatically saved. But regardless, we're 28 and 22. So let's look at it. Game number one at the one minute mark. Army, 23 and a half point favorite over the UAB Blazers. So let's go ahead and pull up what we're looking at. Full season stats, power rating, etc. has got Army minus 22.6. My stats for the last four weeks only would have Army favored by 27.8. UAB is getting progressively worse, and that's pretty much across the board. They're pretty decent at stopping the pass. However, they don't create any havoc, which is not going to matter because you can't get that against Army anyway. Uh, but passing downs, PPA, etc. cetera. I've, I've never seen a predicted points added per pass where they're number 43 overall, but on passing downs, they're number 96. So when a team really has to pass, they can do it with ease against this UAB defense. UAB cannot stop the run. They are terrible. Navy ate them up, and uh, and basically everybody else has eaten them up too. Tulane did the same thing. Uh, they're number 130 in predicted points added allowed per rush. Uh, they're number 132 in rushing success rate allowed. Army is number one on offense. And on the other side of the ball, Army's defense isn't great, but by God, UAB can't throw the ball this year. Number 104 in PPA allowed, or excuse me, in PPA per pass. Army is number 58 in that. And Army is number 89 in passing success rate allowed. But UAB number 94. Like, this is just, this is not good. Not only that, but UAB, even if they do get down there, they can't finish drives. They're number 110 in points per scoring opportunity. That's points per drive inside the opponent's 40-yard line. Uh, this is rough. Army is 5-0 and against the spread. That's why this number has gotten out just dramatically. It's tough sometimes to take a service academy at such a high number, but Army is so incredibly efficient. They are number one in predicted points added per drive on offense. They are the most efficient team in college football. UAB is bad. They're number 106 in defensive predicted points added allowed per drive. That ain't good. That ain't good. All right, so let's make it easy. We are going with Army, minus 23 and a half. That number's actually gotten out to like 26, 27. So ESPN locks theirs in early. Uh, we'll take Army on that. All right, next, Clemson going to Wake Forest. Clemson is a 20 and a half point favorite. So let's go ahead and pull up what we got here. Da da da. And I've got Clemson by 17.34 as far as the full season stats are concerned. And these numbers do include the Georgia game. But since Clemson got rid of Georgia, they have been absolutely lights out. Uh, over the last four weeks, just stats based on the last four weeks, I've got Clemson by 35 points. They are absolutely rolling. The defense isn't great. Now, part of that had to do with the Georgia game. But if you look at their offense... This Wake defense is so bad. I mean, they are so bad. Uh, Clemson, number 37 in PPA per pass. Wake is number 127. Passing success rate, 42 for Clemson, 134 for Wake Forest. Wake Forest defense is awful. I mean, just absolutely awful. Uh, you look at rushing. Clemson is number six in predicted points added per rush. And Wake is number one, let's see, 110. Like, it just it, it doesn't get any better. Um, Clemson can finish drives. Wake Forest can't stop people from finishing drives. Wake Forest on offense, they're number 30, or 26 as far as getting scoring opportunities per game. So they have 6.8 drives per game where they get inside the opponent 40, but they're number 78 in points per scoring opportunity. 
So just a little under four points, which is basically just a touch over a field goal. Whenever they get inside the 40, they can't finish drives. Uh, Clemson is number 106 in that. But, like, I, I don't I don't trust them. I don't trust Wake Forest to be able to score on really anybody. I don't even know that they're going to get down there. So, yeah, it says 17 here. I'm going to trust the last four weeks out of what we've seen from Clemson. And uh, we are going to take Clemson at the minus 20 and a half. I know that these are big numbers, but my gosh, the discrepancy between some of these teams is pretty wild. Now, here is a big difference. Missouri and UMass. And they were playing at UMass in Amherst. UMass plus 27 and a half is what we're looking at here. And let's pull up the sheet. It shows Missouri minus 21.47. Now, that is for the full season. But if you look over the past four weeks, Missouri minus six. Missouri is getting worse. And we thought, myself and Parker thought, before the Texas A&M game, that there was another gear that Missouri could hit. And it turns out, maybe there's not. They're not targeting Luther Burden as much. Maybe they will in this game. Who knows? Scheduling spot is terrible for Missouri. Absolutely terrible. Um, they just played A and M and got their brains beat in. They've got Auburn next week and Alabama the week after that. This UMass game on the road doesn't matter. There's, there's none of it matters for Missouri. This is mainly a don't get anybody hurt kind of game. If you watch the U.S. or the Bet U.S. College Football Show, uh, I gave out Missouri. Uh, sorry, I gave out UMass plus twenty-seven. Well, now I'm getting another half point here. Yeah, you, you look at some of these numbers, and yes, obviously they look bad for UMass on offense. UMass statistically won the game against Northern Illinois last week. And part of the reason is because their defense is actually pretty good. They're pretty good against the pass. Not great against the run, but that's okay. Like, it's it's not a huge deal. I think that this is more or less, like I said, don't get anybody hurt game for Missouri. I don't think they're going to run it up here. I don't expect them to to do anything crazy. Um, yeah, this is pretty simple. So let's uh, let's go back over here. Let's take UMass. Only fourteen percent of people have picked UMass. Texas and Oklahoma. Okay, first off, my sheet is wrong on here, but I'll I'll explain it. So let's go on and pull it up. In the Cotton Bowl, this one's at three thirty instead of two thirty. Uh, my sheet is wrong up here. It should say Texas. Instead, it says Oklahoma for some reason. i got to go back inside the algorithm and figure out exactly what I what I did wrong. But I looked through the numbers, and yes, it should be Texas by quite a bit there, actually. Uh, this is pulling a, a weird, weird stat for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that. But uh, full season, Texas minus 14.91. Obviously, we've got Texas minus 14.5 here. Um, over the past four weeks, Texas minus 15. I actually think it's supposed to be more than that. It's supposed to be closer to like 21. Texas has been really good, really good lately. I, I can't. Oklahoma's going to get some of their wide receivers back for this. Hawking is the, um, is the new quarterback for Oklahoma or Hawkins, Michael Hawkins. I think that's right. Uh, let's double check and make sure. I thought I had it right before. Michael Hawkins, not Hawking, Hawkins. Uh, he's He's been pretty good. 62% completion percentage, one touchdown, no picks. And as far as running the ball, um, 28 carries, 101 yards. That's 3.61 per carry, and he's got a touchdown. The offense moves better with him behind center because he's mobile, right? Jackson Arnold, not all that mobile. Um I mean, obviously, Jackson Arnold is, is not terrible. 41 carries for 138 yards. He's uh, 3.37, which is not that different from what Michael Hawkins is doing. But I think Hawkins moves better in the pocket, which makes it easier on the offensive line. That's not very good. And you've got a not very good offensive line, which you can see here. They are number 81 and havoc rate allowed. Well, Texas is number 21. Like, that ain't good. That ain't good. As a matter of fact, let's try and... Yeah, let's zoom in a little bit. So, in this spot, most people are going to take the underdog in a rivalry game. But when I look at this, you see down here, five factors plus talent rank, it's got Oklahoma number 14 and Texas number one. 
Texas is playing insanely efficient football. They had a bye week last week. I, I think that Texas is just the overall better team. And when they have an advantage, you saw this a couple of years ago when Dylan Gabriel was out for Oklahoma. Now, granted, that was a, a six-win Oklahoma team, so not very good. But, man, I look at this. I see a drastic advantage for Texas. Like, get out of here with this. I will I will gladly take Texas minus 14 and a half. I know that the hook is right there, and I know that typically, typically, we we go with an underdog when they're getting that many points in a rivalry game. I think Sark's going to lay it on them. I really do. All right, we carry on, and we're at the 10-minute mark. Let me go on and tell you right quick. Uh, ticket Smarter. Ticketsmarter.com, that is the third-party ticketing site that you need to be visiting for every single event that you're wanting to go to. All of them, I'm telling you. Tickets to these games are expensive. Red River costs an arm and a leg. If you want to go to Texas and Texas uh, A&M at the end of the year, the get-in price is like five fifty. So if you're wanting to go to these games anyway, why not do yourself a favor and go to Ticketsmarter.com and use the promo codes WCE10. It's going to get you 10 bucks off an order of $100 or more. WCE20, that's WCE20, that's going to get you 20 bucks off an order of $300 or more, and you can do it every single time. This is not a one-time sign-up bonus, something like that. Every time you want to buy tickets, you can go save a little bit of money. So do yourself a favor. WCE10 or WCE20, think smarter with Ticket Smarter. All right, we carry on. Stanford is going to Notre Dame. And let me tell you, I don't know if Daniels is playing for Stanford. Uh, and that is not a good thing. I'm uh, I'm looking over here just to double check, make sure. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, Ashton Daniels uh, did not play against Virginia Tech, and they are bad without him under center. Uh, I don't think he's going to play again this week. I'm just going to take a stab on this. Uh, you look at the numbers, and all of a sudden, there. Maybe we pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> that would make a lot more sense. Okay, so Notre Dame, full season, I've got Notre Dame by 26. Over the last four weeks, Notre Dame minus 43. Since that week two loss to Northern Illinois, Notre Dame's numbers have been significantly improved. It's a good football team, really good football team. They're not great uh, throwing the ball, but that's okay. Like, Stanford is pretty good at defending the rush. They're number 37 in PPA allowed per rush. That's predicted points added allowed per rush. Uh, Notre Dame is number 10 in that stat. Uh, as far as offensive line yards, Notre Dame has not been great. But, you know, I, I still think they're going to be okay. Their number 16 in passing explosiveness is Notre Dame. Stanford's defense is number 92. Now, over on the other side of the ball, I don't think Stanford's going to be able to move the ball on Notre Dame at all. I just I don't see any path for Stanford to be able to score here. Uh, even Even when they do get down there, they're number 85 in points per scoring opportunity. Notre Dame allows less than a field goal every time somebody crosses the 40 on them. So, yeah, at, without Stanford being able to score, I mean, this seems pretty easy to me. Uh, let's move it back over here. Let's take Notre Dame. Only 43% of people have picked Notre Dame, I guess, because the spread is so high. If Daniels ain't playing, it's lights out. Lights out. All right, Purdue at Illinois. Illinois, a 19.5-point favorite. Purdue is 1-4, and four, and they are atrocious oh this team is so bad so so bad all right let's uh let's pick up the numbers here so you can see what we're looking at okay move it back just a touch so you can see okay now illinois has played a pretty difficult strength of schedule they're number 34 now purdue is number 48 but as of the past four weeks i think it's actually uh it Purdue hasn't played as difficult a schedule as Illinois in the past four weeks. Let's just say that. So while the past four weeks has got Illinois minus eight, full season has got Illinois minus almost 18 points, 31 to 13, somewhere around there. Um, I look at this and, well, 31 and a half to 13 and a half, we'll say. Whatever you want to say. ESPN's got a 19 and a half. There's a little bit of added stuff, but look, Purdue's defense is just so bad. Illinois is not great at running the ball. Now, part of that is based on who they have played, right? As of late, uh, Illinois Illinois has played against, 
Let's see. In the past four weeks, now granted they did have a bye week in there, um, Central Michigan at Nebraska at Penn State. They had 166 yards rushing against uh, against Nebraska. They, they ran the ball 32 times for 34 yards against Penn State. But that's Penn State. This is Purdue. There's a massive difference. So when you've got guys like Fagan, like uh, Lowry, like guys like that, I, I think you're going to be fine in this situation. Valentine even uh, could get in there and get some get some carries. I I don't trust Purdue to be able to do anything. They can't score. They're number 129 in PPA per pass, number 79 PPA per rush. And this Illinois defense, I think, is actually better than what their numbers are showing here. If you just look at the overall numbers, number 51 in PPA margin, number 127 for Purdue. And this game is at Champaign. So it seems fairly easy to me. But maybe maybe not. I don't know. 79% of the people agree. Illinois, I will take that because I don't trust Purdue to stop anybody. I am dying over here. I'm telling you, my allergies are killing me, killing me. All right, carrying on. Mississippi State at Georgia. Georgia, a 32.5 point favorite. And I got to tell you, this freshman quarterback for Mississippi State just, it ain't it. It ain't it. All right, let's, uh, let's pull up the stats so that you can see what we're looking at. And we got Georgia favored by 27.36 over the past four weeks. It's Georgia minus 32. And yet we're sitting at just a hair under 35 on this. Georgia does not like to run up the score. And I don't blame them. Uh, when you look at, let's see, who does Georgia have on deck? That's the question. Are they going to be looking ahead? They play at Texas next week. Okay, so in that situation... I don't think they're going to be showing anything, right? It, look, all the Mississippi State numbers are terrible. 130 in PPA per pass. Uh, what, you're, what you're looking at is plays per game. Georgia is number 95 in plays per game. It's tough to get margin at that. Now, we know the Mississippi State defense is terrible. Number 131 in defensive success rate, as you can see there. Uh, they are number one... Is that 134? 134. Dead last in the country in PPA allowed per drive. For Mississippi State. Boy, that is rough. Now, granted, they have played the number eight strength of schedule, as you see up there. Um, I'm going to go schedule spot. We saw what Mississippi State did against Texas. They slowed the game down. Uh, State typically likes to play fast. Uh, Plays per game, they're number 46, but that has dropped drastically for them. I think that they're going to slow this thing down. I don't think Georgia cares anything about blowing them out here. Uh, I know it's 34 and a half or 32 and a half, excuse me. Um, I will take state here to hang within this number only because Georgia is playing Texas next week and they're not going to want to show anything. They're going to play the most vanilla game that you have ever seen uh, getting ready for this. So uh, moving along, what do we have left? We got three left. Florida at Tennessee. Tennessee, a 15 and a half point favorite. And we'll pull up the stats over here so that you can see what we're looking at. And I got to tell you, um, everybody thinks Tennessee is just going to bounce back. And I don't think that I necessarily believe that. So my numbers for the full season have Tennessee favored by 21. 39, well, 40 to 18 and a half, somewhere around there. But it has, have you seen anything out of Tennessee's offense that would lead you to believe that? Now, granted, it is Florida's defense that's pretty terrible. They were able to stop the run against UCF last week. I think Tennessee might be a little bit of a different beast, but you start looking at, you know, havoc rate allowed, et cetera. Tennessee just has not played well as of late. Tennessee, let's see, they got Florida this week. They got Alabama next week. So do they think that they can beat Florida without showing anything? Maybe. Uh, but they played... Kent State is still in these numbers. You've got, let's see, Kent State in these numbers. You got at Oklahoma. You got a bye week. Then you got at Arkansas. The offense didn't look good against Oklahoma. It didn't look good against Arkansas. Now against Kent State, obviously, drastic difference in who they're playing. Uh, Florida, on the other hand, pull this up, and they have played at Mississippi State. 
hold on. Texas A&M at Mississippi State by week and UCF. So three games in the last four weeks, and they look good against UCF. They look good against Mississippi State. I think Florida's going to hang here. Uh, we'll see. Uh, all of these stat profiles like this, you can get them if uh, if you're subscribed to bettingcfb.com. It's 5 bucks a month, 50 bucks for the year, just so you guys know in case you want it. So, uh, easy enough. Let's take Florida. Only 29% of the people have picked them. I'll take them at plus 15 and a half on that. Ohio State and Oregon. Ohio State, three and a half point favorite at Eugene. And we'll pull up the numbers here so that you can see what we're looking at. And Ohio State has gotten better as the season has progressed. Now, their strength of record is still not great, but part of that has to do with the fact that they are number 109 in current strength of schedule. But Oregon is number 94 in current strength of schedule. They've not looked very good. Uh, they Let's look at turnover margin. Oregon number 81. They're number uh, 59 in giveaways per game. They're only number 92 in takeaways per game. Ohio State's number 21. Number 35 in giveaways per game. Number 22 in takeaways per game. Ohio State's better in penalties. I mean, it's, it's drastic on that. Um, this Ohio State defense is number three in PPA allowed per drive, number three in PPA allowed per play. They're number 38 in defensive success rate. Now, this is garbage time excluded, by the way. That's where these, uh, what these stats are. If you go based on the last four-week stats, which in the last four weeks, Oregon has played, let's see, at Oregon State, at UCLA, and Michigan State. And Ohio State, on the other hand, has played... Marshall at Michigan State and Iowa. Comparable opponents, I would think, somewhere around there. Uh, as a matter of fact, Iowa might be a little bit better than anybody that Oregon's played. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. So, while Oregon has looked pretty good, I still like Ohio State stats-wise. They are significantly better than Oregon thus far on the season. Now, we have seen that Big Ten teams that are traveling two-plus time zones for games are one and eight straight up, but I think it's more difficult when you're going from West Coast to East Coast as opposed to East Coast to West Coast. You're just, you're, I don't think your body clock is affected that much when you're, uh, when you're going out to the West Coast. So, uh, I look at this, and I'm going to side with the majority here, which is 55% of people have picked Ohio State. I will side with them. Last game of the day, Boise State. Uh, let's see. Minus 21 and a half at Hawaii. And let's pull up the sheet. Let's, let's let you see the numbers because you might think that this is not very much, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Hawaii actually statistically is not terrible. And when you look at Boise State's defensive numbers, number 104, you would think that Hawaii would be able to score on them. The problem is that Hawaii is number 78 in PPA per rush, number 89 in PPA per pass, and that's against the number 129 current strength of schedule. It's not good. It's not good. Uh, overall on the season, I've got Boise by 16.23. I, uh, Based on the last four weeks, I mean, Boise is steamrolling teams. They're I've got them favored by 26.7. So we'll say 27 points. 82% of people like Boise on this so far. I mean, I look at five factors plus talent. To the five factors rating, just raw numbers, Boise number 13, Hawaii number 56, and Hawaii at home, you would think, well, maybe, maybe being at home on the island would be a big deal, except that there's basically no home field advantage for them. They're playing like a high school football stadium. Like 2,000 people can fit into this thing. It's nothing uh, until they get the new thing built in 2026, I think. And so they got another, they, they got this year and next year. I'm going to go Boise um, because I just don't want to get in front of that. I mean, it, it just feels, it feels absurd. So let's, uh, let's take a look at, let's go back to this because we're looking at how many total points will be scored in Ohio State versus Oregon for the tiebreaker. I, so the total is uh, 52 and a half. It may have moved. That's what it was at open. 68.6 uh, is what I've got. 
let's uh, let's split the difference. Let's say let's say sixty points. So we'll put in sixty points for this. So which would be an over, and I don't know that I necessarily trust that. All right, that is going to wrap things up. You guys are fantastic. I appreciate all of you. Uh, subscribe if you have not already done that. This one took a little bit longer. Not going to take as long on the uh, under the radar picks this week. I'll say that. I'll say that. All right. You guys are awesome. BettingCFB.com, winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe to the pod and the YouTube. And of course, the Bet US College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And that is going to wrap things up. Don't forget about Ticket Smarter, of course. Don't forget about Ghost Sleeves, ghostsleeves.com slash WCE. Get your kinesiology compression sleeves for your elbows, your knees, all that kind of stuff. It certainly helps out. Uh, and I think that's going to be it. All right. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me Gary at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you.